You're listening to the Nerd to Know Media Network. Join us at nerdtoknowmedia.com. And welcome to this week's edition of the Game Quarter. My name is Kino Calicorn, as always, and today we have a new guest on the show, a personal friend of mine, Dave O'Connor, who is a massive history nerd who studied in NUI Galway. How are you doing, Dave? I'm well. Thanks for having me, Keen. No worries. Sorry it took so long to kind of pin down a date on this. A big, broad question. How have you been doing the past few weeks? Oh, all right. It's, uh, it's just been boring enough lockdown. <laughs> but you know the days keep keep they just keep turning well that's fair enough uh yeah i suppose before we kind of get into the gaming stuff like were you in the middle of anything before the very strict lockdown happened in march or kind of were you between things like i literally had gone out on a holiday when i saw the news that the country was locked down and I think it was literally the middle of the week they said, yeah, Friday, we're locking down. It was like the Wednesday I saw it and we were coming back on, I think, Friday. Actually, we were coming back on Saturday. Mm. And the Saturday I got back, the country that I left immediately locked down. <laughs> oh so God. it was pretty lucky. So it must have felt like it was chasing you like back home across the ocean or something like that. A little bit. Like I remember I was collected at the airport and the first thing I was given was a bottle of hand sanitizer and told not to go near anybody. <laughs> Oh my god, so you left like a normal world and came back into lockdown world. Yeah, it was uh, it was a strange one. That is bizarre. And like, yeah, I know what you mean, because I, now earlier than you, I was in Amsterdam in the middle of February, and we were just, we were there only like four days, and we hadn't heard anything when we left. And then like on the, in the airport on the way back, we heard the first reports of like Irish cases in the north. I was, oh. was kind of like, oh should we miss this flight what's gonna happen like you know <laughs> like just turn to each other is this gonna be a big thing ah, it's probably not gonna be a big thing right uh, yeah and then the flight was delayed by two or three hours and we're like is that connected is that a thing what's happening like <laughs> I, I remember because i was away and i was like i was away skiing and we were staying in this they call like a chalet which is like you, you book like a room but there's like four other rooms separately booked so you could be staying with anybody and there were two, like one of the rooms was booked by two doctors. So there would be nights we'd be sitting around and they'd be talking about things. And one person would read out a list of things that they were told about coronavirus, like mm-hmm. drink lots of water, run through you. And the person was like, that's bollocks. Just drink water <laughs> anyway. But it's not going to help you with a virus. <laughs> and they like debunked every single thing that people were reading in articles. It's like, it was kind of brilliant. Oh my god, like by the end of the evening they were probably like drinking hand sanitizers and washing their hands without soap and all that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. One of the poor fellows got very freaked out once uh, somebody pulled up a map of all the cases around the world. He's like, it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, because like to kind of go into kind of behind the scenes stuff, like you are lucky to not be in Easton's when, because Easton stayed open kind of last before the country locked down. And literally every week until we were coming up we had a different safety measure like for a while it was masks for one week because that was the thing that week and then it was gloves for one week (laughs) and then the week after that we discovered no 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 gloves are bad but you have to wash your hands oh no that's fine but you can't yeah and then it's it kind of felt like i mean it wasn't their fault like they were just responding to whatever the news was but no one quite knew what was accurate and what was to be done like yeah those early days things changed very rapidly from what was uh current news <laughs> but you're but like you're a history person like do you think something like this is going to change the way like we behave or like even anything going forward or will it just be like something mad we talk about like the like the big snow or something like that you know i i think any actual change will only be temporary because you know pandemics and viruses happen a lot and things generally go back to the way they were. People kind of forget. 
Yeah, well, that's kind of a shame because, like, I mean, obviously, I like going back to work and stuff, but I kind of yeah. like seeing everyone out in the world and, like, you know, not spending like a million billion things. It says he who comes back from pennies today. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, the amount of saving being done while you're locked in the house is unreal. Well, that's just it. Yeah, yeah, the amount that goes into coffees, like. But anyway, this is the game corner after all. So let's get into the games. Uh, we talked about it off the air, and your first pick was one I hadn't heard of, which was quite a nice little novelty. Uh, tell us about Total War. Oh, okay. So, so I chose this as our first pick because the Total War series it's been going since probably early two thousands. Mm. It's a it's a P- PC game, and it's basically usually based around historical titles. Now they also do fantasy titles so recently they've done total war warhammer one and ah. two so they're branching off but i've been playing this a lot recently because i bought a new laptop and i my steam library was full of these games because I, that i bought i could never play because the sales are the worst <laughs> I'm, so yeah you go on so sorry. I, I i've just got the chance to play them and i, I can't stop I am taking, unfortunately, the listeners won't get the benefit of this. I'm taking a look at some of the artwork. It reminds me quite a lot of Age of Empires, uh, yeah. which I guess last week was kind of, we were kind of talking about war games like. So it's a kind of strategy based thing. Yeah, yeah. The broad strokes of it is it's kind of like a, a strategy game where you, you, you're put in charge of a, a nation, you know, a historical nation, using the historical time. Mm. And uh, then you can, you, you, you choose how to run your country or whatever, your kingdom or your empire. And then you can fight real time battles in terms of like you move units of hundreds of people mm. and things like that. So it makes you feel really grand. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just like seeing like 20,000 guys like burning down a church or something and kind of feel like, yeah, I, t- you, I, I told them to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you mumble to yourself, I am death. <laughs> So do you, would you tend to play the story mode or would this be more of an online thing for you then? Oh, it's uh, pure, purely single player. I can't play online because one, I'm not competitive and two, I'm not good. Yeah, I was kind of hoping you'd say that because I used to play Age of Empires and like the kind of Warhammer Dawn of War games online. And you just meet the strangest characters there. Like, I think that I've probably told you this in the shop before because it's the story I always tell. But like, I got into a big argument with someone about Darwinism. Oh, okay. uh, like in the middle of like this battle in hell between orcs and chaos soldiers, and you're kind of like, I I don't need this in my life. <laughs> These things, maybe this isn't the forum, you know. <laughs> but like he baited me. I rec- I realize in retrospect he was a troll or possibly she. We never know behind the code names. But like he, it was a normal chat bar. Like you know, oh send your troops there. Oh they're going over the volcano, and then someone says, but let's be honest, evolution doesn't work really. And you're like, oh, hmm. no one ever really says that. Like, if he just said, I don't believe in that, I'd still be annoyed, but whatever. But like saying it as like a fact, I mean, you're a student. Like, I mean, surely you kind of get that facts are facts. Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's they're pretty solid. <laughs> uh, actually, just to kind of harp on the multiplayer thing, we had a lovely guy on, Michael Hilliard, who was a journalist. And he was telling me that he is an Australian who plays this Russian shooter game exclusively with Russians. And he gets oh. a really hard time from being like the only non-Russian in this game. <laughs> like, <laughs> sure, Would he even be able to understand half the insults thrown at him though? Well, here's the thing. The, like, he is Australian and he can speak Russian, but even through the Russian dialect, the accent sneaks out a bit. Uh, and so I've got to cop onto him. Yeah, I must, I really, I really should have had him speak in a bit more Russian because I want, I can't, even after him saying a bit of it, I can't wrap my head around Russian in kind of other accents, especially us. It's like, I mean, like an inglorious bastard. It's like that kind of thing. Like, you know, it's like a whole uh, science to me. Like, yeah, it's, 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 I'm sure it sounds probably like Brad Pitt trying to speak Italian and. That's exactly it. But we've gone completely on a tangent. Tell us about Total War anyway. What kind of time periods do you play in? Well, the one I'm playing at the moment is uh, Attila Total War. So okay, that sounds like good fun. Yeah, it's pretty much set around the fall of Rome, that sort of thing. But I made a classic mistake of choosing to play the Roman Emperor, Empire. Right. 
Western Roman Empire, which they designed the game basically to torture you if you do that. <laughs> How come? So it's you start off and all your cities just don't want to be your cities. <laughs> everybody's unhappy you have like a gauge for public order and they're all miserable and then you spe- if you if you don't spend a lot of money real fast everybody just starts getting disease ridden and it's just a, your empire turns into a horrible place and you're like oh i've made i've made mistakes well this is what i was going to ask like is it just at all out fighting or is there like a coriolanus aspect to it where if there's no war happening a bunch of karens in the senate will complain <laughs> That there isn't enough good, like you know, parades going on or whatever. That kind of can happen. Like, you, like you, they have a system for um, civil wars and people's loyalty in your your faction and things like that, which I cannot get a hold of. And I've watched all the YouTube tutorials you could possibly watch, and I still can't figure it out. I, <laughs> they still hate me. Oh my god! And like, is there like because I imagine in a history game you are beholden to how history works, or is it more like if you win certain battles, Attila the Hun can like run for president in twenty twenty or something like that? Oh, like you can play as the Huns and you can take over Europe and completely. It's um, have you ever heard of Crusader Kings? No, I haven't. I'm afraid. No, that's it's a sort of similar game in that you you have like a, a whole kingdom and things that you that you can control you can make all these decisions and everything but that's very in depth like you can literally become the mongols and turn them christian and have them become like this usually in that game when the mongols become christian they become super boring for some reason they're very entertaining (laughs) when they're just destroying everything but um it's it's like total war is it's not quite as in depth as that game so you can do anything you really want but you can't it doesn't go down into nitty-gritty Okay. All right. Well, you know what? Like, um, I my big go-to one is a uh, Star Wars Empire at War, where it's like, uh, you control. It's pre- probably the same premise as yours by way of space, which is just you need to take control of all the planets in the galaxy, and like the the more involved you get with it, it can just kind of eat your life. So I think yeah. I'm kind of happy to hear that sometimes there's kind of buffers on how far the game can go and all that kind of stuff, like. See, I feel with strategy games, you do at a certain point, you kind of feel like you're like a middle manager in <laughs> like it's, it's just, just just wondering why people are doing everything and why it's all going wrong. And you're like, oh, why isn't there someone above me? That's exactly it. Like it's um, the, the one I was mentioning about the Star Wars one, like uh, I spent an entire month just the Empire just kept attacking this one place where I had it fairly well fortified. But, like, because it's a game, if they just keep attacking with, like, ten guys and running away, you have to sit there and watch them do it. And this went on for a month. Oh, and I yeah, was that's... like, yeah, I, I, do, I don't feel like a conquering overlord <laughs> now. I feel like a supervisor, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's very much that. <laughs> like, I think in, a, in total, or, like, in my game that I play at the moment, like, I'm basically just, just trying to reconquer one settlement that rebelled against me. I just really want to get it back because I want some damn money. It's a big <laughs> money maker. But the, oh, this, this huge hordes of Huns just keep showing on the opposite side of the map. I'm like, okay, I can't send anybody to do anything. I mean, surely you'd think they'd run out eventually. Well, I don't know. <laughs> the game actually has it in built like when Attila the Hun is born and when he becomes of age and everything just gets, it just goes... Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, I, I must ask, are all of your pick strategies game, games then? Because the next one on my list, if I can find it, is uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance. So what's the story with that one then? Oh, no, that, that is uh, an open world RPG set okay. in a medieval Bohemia. Which... You have my attention. It is honestly the nerdiest game I could possibly think of because it's purely made for people who study history. There is genuinely a whole segment of that game that I feel was made for the college course I did. <laughs> because <laughs> it's, it's an open world RPG. You play as a, basically, you start off as a blacksmith's son. In, and at one point you have, to, you have to learn how to read because you start off not knowing how to read. So you see things and the words are all jumbled up. Mm. And you're like, okay, there's, 
there's a message here, but the character can't read, so he can't make it out. So I can't read it. <laughs> so you have to find somebody who will teach you how to read. <laughs> oh my god, like, this is like ground up world building. Like it takes like an in game week. <laughs> <laughs> oh but my god. The, the segment that I'm particularly referencing is at one point you have to sneak your way into a monastery and pretend to be a monk. Right. And they basically researched this so much that they, they, they insisted that you basically do become a monk in the game. You wake up at a certain time, <laughs> and then you, you go get your breakfast, you go to prayers, and you can literally stand there for like, I think 30 minutes of real time, like an hour in game, and just pray. You stand there while the monks are praying, and you follow them out, they do their chores, and you have chores to do. All the while, you're supposed to track down this person who I think you're supposed to kill, if I remember correctly. And it's you could literally spend an entire real week doing this whole segment. <laughs> and uh, you, you also have to, part of the chores, you have to um, write, you have to copy texts in a book. And it's all written in like Gothic script and everything. And genuinely, it's very difficult to read. And I had an entire college class based around learning how to read this particular script. So I felt very vindicated when I played that part. Oh my God. Because like, I think of like, you know, those games where like, you're, you're a survivor on an island and you fish for sharks and all that kind of stuff. But this is like next level. You are just, you probably are basically qualified to guard the Book of Kells now. Yeah, you're, pre you're pretty much, you're just a monk at that stage. And I think your hair genuinely starts falling out. <laughs> Imagine if that was like the, the catch though, like, you know, like you thought you're going to get a game and at the end you get like this link to this print off like certificate so you can go <laughs> yeah. be a monk in like the Gwail Talk areas, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, you actually have to join a, a silent convent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To get the DLC, you have to go up there and like be able to speak, you know, the plot of, of Game of Thrones in Latin and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Now, actually, I, I do remember when I played this. I had I'd read all the reviews beforehand, and I they talked about in very broad terms that there was a very boring section in the in around right the middle part of the game. Like, it just really could have had a bit more action or something else to it. And I had heard about the monk section, so I figured it was it. And the game is you'd hope so, up, wouldn't you? You would. <laughs> the game is actually set up so that if you know it's coming, you can break into the monastery beforehand and stash a boatload of money all your weapons and gear and everything in there and then when you go in you, like you're the gate it's supposed to set up that you give up everything and you have nothing on you that you've been using the whole of the rest of the game but i just had a chest full of all this stuff so i bribed everybody to basically so i didn't have to do any of the chores and i found out who i had to kill and i just pulled out a mace and i just killed him that's handy <laughs> it was you know you can just do whatever you want in the game <laughs> you know how to work it you can work it so, apart from kind of monking around the place, what do you actually do in this game? Oh, uh, well, there is an actual story as far from being just being a monk. <laughs> so, it's it's kind of like a, it feels like the start of a story, you know? It's yeah. like you're a you start off as a peasant blacksmith son, and then all your family's obviously killed because it's that's what has to happen in RPG, right? Of course, of course. Why start in a happy story? <laughs> yeah. But then you go out into the world and you're supposed to retrieve like the last sword that your father made. And then it's kind of, you circle around trying to get the sword back and it just never seems to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever um, gets in the way. I think there's like three occasions where it sets it up that you're getting the sword back this time and it just doesn't happen. So is it one of those games, like, as I remember, I unfortunately I don't have it to hand to read. But I remember reading a story about someone playing Skyrim and like, you know, they got a dog and then they kept it. But then they had to build a house for the dog. But then the dog was lonely. So they had to get a family <laughs> and then the dog was competing with the baby. And then the baby got cursed. They had to summon a demon and like all oh, kind of like and you're just so far removed from the plot because of busy work. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, this is this is all filler. It's not not actual quest here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, if it's, it's Sorry, you go first. Sorry. Oh, that's so no. Uh, so, well, I mean, like you, you just get very distracted, like doing very mundane things. Like yeah, I remember when the game released, 
part of uh, a big thing around it was like lock picking was very difficult. Mm. I think I genuinely spent an hour just trying to pick one easy lock in the game. <laughs> but so it I, does feel like busy work. Yeah, but like I kind of miss that about games because like I mean, recently I played Final Fantasy X where no joke to get one of the super weapons, you have to dodge a random bolt of lightning. 200 times in a row with no uh, like breaks and i feel like all games were kind of designed with that level of just sheer punishment and like whereas everything is kind of very like kind of user friendly like that you can always like if there's an obstacle you can dlc it or you can find a workaround or uh, something like or, that you know or it'll flat out tell you yes yes exactly like I, I blame that bloody fairy thing from Zelda for that, for introducing <laughs> that into culture. Giving all the hints. God damn. Because <laughs> that's it. Like, I, my go-to thing is the Switch. And, like, we just finished Luigi's Mansion. And, like, whenever we were, like, too thick to kind of play a kid's game, the guy <laughs> would ring up and go, have you checked under that table there? Like, you know, like... Oh, my God. Do, do you remember when um, actual game manuals used to be a thing? Like yeah, actually, buy them. I yeah, because I found an outdated Destiny one in Ethan's, like where it's like that was almost part of the hook. If you wanted to actually complete Pokemon, you had to go out and buy the strategy guide, and they would deliberately put parts in the game which were incomprehensible. So I, you'd go be encouraged to go out and get it, you know. Like that was one of the best parts about it when you actually buy the strategy guide and you can actually play the game. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had like a photo of like playstation 2 gamers in like the late 90s early 2000s like with a controller in one hand and this like lofty kind of third level education book in their <laughs> other trying to navigate it you know <laughs> <laughs> so out of curiosity though um who do you think would enjoy this game like who do you think it's kind of aimed at see now this game it's it's interesting from its kind of inception because it was so it's set in like medieval Bohemia, but it's made by a Czech company. Right. It's basically a startup. And it's their first game. And it was actually crowdfunded from Kickstarter, I think, back in the day. So Oh, wow. Okay. So proper like ground up. like. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of, it's very much built for a very specific kind of people. Mm. <laughs> but uh, like it has a very unique combat system, which is, it's difficult, but it's also it, it gets easier the more you learn it, and also the more your character gets better at it. Mm. And it kind of it, it was very heavily marketed around that, but it's obviously got other things. So it's very much for people who like history, who are nerds. So basically, the audience is whoever has heard all of this elaborate work to become a monk and wants, and just in their head, a little voice says, "Tell me more." Pretty much, yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got a few minutes left, so let's potentially start some beef with the anime crash course but as we talk oh. about Metro 2023. Why is that your pick? Why is that my pick? Uh, well, well, Metro is a great game. It's just I couldn't, I could not finish it. it uh, basically, I had to play it with Kev, and he had to basically force me to finish it. And Yeah, for, to, for clarification for anyone who isn't the three specific people we're talking about. We're yeah. talking about Kev from the Anime Crash Course and the Nerd to Know Media podcast, who we've also worked with and I believe you've been friends with for many, many years now. Many years. Yeah, I don't know why. We got a, a, a notion that um, because the Redux version was released, we had to play it because both of us have a, a weird love of uh, Slav culture, which Kev has a bit more than me. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he just knows a lot more random words <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and just to even back up further what exactly is metro like I, when I, when you said metro i thought you meant metro prime like what is this like oh sorry no no, no. metro is it's based off of a book series which is basically like a post-apocalyptic world in moscow's underground metro system right okay like that's that's the basic concept of the game and it's it's very russian <laughs> it's <laughs> if, you, if you finish the game uh you have you you will be made to feel sad it's that russian 
<laughs> oh my god, I I I re- I'm, I'm wondering if one day this show will have like a Russian fan base who wonders why we're singling them out two episodes in a row. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we're maybe leaning a bit too hard okay <laughs> and what kind of so what kind of game is this then like is it like strategy or is it like rpg like or it's a first person shooter basically okay. it's more or less uh on rail shooter straight straight line sort of thing mm. not too open i think the later games in the series get a bit more open but it's fairly linear but um it basically spent the entire, spent the, most of the game in like dark, cramped underground, terrified of like mutants and things like that. <laughs> and people and... with varying degrees of Russian accents. It's... <laughs> <laughs> but you, you can play the game in like the, the original Russian audio with subtitles, which is like the purest approach. But if you play it with like the voice actors of like English dialogue with Russian accent, it's just unintentionally hilarious sometimes i was about to say yeah i i hearing like voice actors giving it their best go is probably very entertaining in and of itself like there's one particular character that it stands out in my mind called borbon <laughs> <laughs> and he genuinely just has the most outrageous moments it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like i could endlessly just quote his lines go on tell me what does borbon do <laughs> <laughs> Nothing that doesn't sound racist, I was saying. <laughs> okay, that's for listeners. It's, that's it's... your that's your YouTube homework, and don't hold us accountable for anything <laughs> that goes on in that. <laughs> <laughs> and the question that's burned into my mind is, why did you need Kev's help? Is there just like a level of malicious difficulty to it, or? I think I, I think so. Like I didn't. I originally had played it years and years ago on like my pc at the time mm. which was it it was basically like playing a flip book the mm. frames were it was like 10 frames a minute it was terrible so i didn't get very far into it after that and then redux came out and i was playing we're playing on the xbox and i decided i had to finish it because i don't finish games very often and he decided he wanted to play it with me and we didn't realize how actually hard it was <laughs> until we started playing it and we literally were passing the controller over every time one of us died and it was literally like every five minutes oh i see it wasn't even like a two-player thing then like it was just suffering no it's a single player game <laughs> but, <laughs> and, uh, it came to a point where it's like i don't want to play it anymore it's like no we gotta play it we just gotta finish it but that's a kind of bonding thing in and, and of itself on because stage... oh so you go first sorry <laughs> So, yeah, it is, yeah, it is definitely a bonding thing just to get over the finish line. <laughs> Actually commit to finishing the damn thing. And at one point, we genuinely, I think there was a whole segment that we just ran through. Like, didn't even play it as intended. Just just ran. You would be amazed how often that works, though. Like, oh, you know... I think Dark Souls is pretty much based around that. <laughs> just run. That's how I played anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's because i i had that in final fantasy 12 that's to loop back to the earlier thing that's an rpg where you very much get you should be fighting on this empire and saving a civilization but you get distracted by someone's quest to get ingredients for a nice rabbit stew and it's <laughs> like you just like you'll now and again find a dungeon and they won't give you a notion of whether you're ready for it yet and you just feel so unheroic holding down the escape button watching them run, put their weapons away with this big lumbering thing coming after you. And there isn't even action-y music. You just feel oh. properly lame, you know? <laughs> You're just like, oh, I made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My power fantasy has gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think, get what... Yeah, you go first, sorry. I think my favourite definition of, like, um, just side quests that just take you out of the whole uh, impetus of like this the plot the whole it takes all the momentum out of everything is the witcher 3 where they ask you to find a pan <laughs> what yeah it's just an old lady standing outside her house saying she's lost her pan and you go in and you find it <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i didn't know you were like a witch it makes sense now you're a witcher 3 yeah. person are you oh yeah oh god yeah i a game, another yeah. game i've never finished because that game is too long Uh, I have been planning a Witcher 3 special for ages with this uh, comedian friend of mine, Alex Byrne, and another friend of mine, Searcha, who 
has made it her business just to play Gwent and nothing else oh in the game. <laughs> so I may have to touch base with you about that. But um, before we wrap up, like, was there anything else about the games you wanted to say or anything you just wanted to say on the air in general? Um, I, I don't know. I, the, the, the games I picked, I think I picked them because for, for me, they're kind of unique in that they just try to do their own thing. Strategy games in particular, you know, they, they're definitely their own thing. It's a strategy game. Mm -hmm. it, it's like a lot of games are kind of, they fall into the, the form of open world, collectathons, and that sort of thing. But it, it, just, just games that, you know, they want to be their own unique thing. And you can say it totally know exactly what, what, what it is, you know. It's, it's nice. Yes. There's a, just, you know what, I think that's getting forgotten in, in games. Nice is good. Yeah. <laughs> and can I just ask before we wrap then is there any particular reason you were drawn to these three games during the lockdown or was that an ingredient in it at all they eat up time <laughs> so much time <laughs> oh my god like, like I, I, genuinely, I think I'd I think I could lose <laughs> five hours easy <laughs> See, I'm at the completely different end of life because I need games that I can enjoy for 20 minutes while the baby's sleeping and not feel like I've wasted my time. And the Switch games are just uh, perfect for that, you know? Yeah, when you have responsibilities. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, go, go without them if you can. So uh, we're going to go all time on that episode of The Game Corner. Thank you very much, Dave O'Connor, for your recommendations, Total War, Kingdom Come Deliverance, and Metro 2023, and indeed for potentially starting the beef with Anime Crash Course. Uh, <laughs> this has been The Game Corner, and we'll be back same time this Friday, and thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to a Nerd to Know Media production.